Okay, today we're going to be looking at special lines that um, have to go through the origin and don't have a constant in their equation that are called proportional. So just as a reminder, the things that we're studying this, this year are all linear, and what that means is if you were to graph them, they would be in a line pattern. No, that doesn't mean that you connect the dots. It just means that each dot is sort of the same vertical uh, and horizontal change from the other. So it is a constant rate of change. Uh, when you progress along in math, you'll have things that aren't constant rate of changes. You'll have things that are quadratic. You'll have things that maybe don't even have a pattern, uh, so we can't assess any particular equation to them. Um, but lines are just that constant rate of change, that slope. They have a uh, rock value that is the same every single time. Um, to look at the difference between a proportional and a non-proportional relationship, we'll study this first kind of case study. So we're going to go and study, again, uh, some DVD rental places, but instead of rental, renting them, we're actually going to buy them here. So you have I Heart Movies that is charging $12 per DVD, and then you have Movies Are We that have $8 per DVD. Uh, so to kind of compensate for the lower price, they're going to say that you have a $15 monthly fee. So our Already we're pretty good at taking these word problems and these scenarios and writing the equation. So we'll go ahead and do it for these guys. And we will define uh, our variables x and y. So in this case, uh, the number of DVDs bought is our independent. And then what depends on the number of DVDs bought? Well, um, the cost per month in dollars. Don't forget your unit. So with this one, we don't have a flat fee. We don't have anything that you pay every single month. So your cost is just y equals 12x. So again, that rate of change is the coefficient. Over at Movies Are We, we have a 15, well, sorry, $8 per DVD. So $8 per x, uh, starting with a $15 you know, subscription fee. It could be a flat rate. I don't know. But we have two equations. And what you notice about the equations is that this one has no visible constant, but it does have an intercept and is zero. I don't actually say plus zero, but we know that when it's lacking the constant, it passes through the origin. So from the equation, we'll go ahead and, and study tables, and we'll make a table for, you know, zero DVDs bought, 5, 10, 20, and then a general one for X. And we'll do both uh, companies' cost comparison on the same row. So for iHeartMovies, if you don't buy any DVDs, you don't pay anything. But over at Movies Are We, even if you don't buy a DVD, you still have to pay the $15 every month. So then you go to five movies, and we think, well, for this guy, I'm just multiplying this, you know, times 12. So we have $60 here. And then 10, you're like, okay, well, I can multiply the cost or the number of DVDs by the cost, and I get this one. And then if you're really astute, you're like, well, um, I mean, when I had five DVDs, it was $60. And then when I doubled the number of DVDs, well, I doubled the cost. So you figured if we apply that logic at 20 DVDs, it would be double the cost of it 10. So we have $240. And again, this is just, you know, how do we get there? We multiplied the number of DVDs bought by the cost per DVD, and we got it. That logic, what I just said there, kind of breaks down here because if we have a flat fee, you have to think it's not just as easy as multiplying this by a certain number and we automatically getting it. So let's fill in the equation. So for five DVDs, we have to pay $8 per DVD plus the 15. So at this one, we're at 40 plus 15 is $55. And then at 10, unlike here where I could just double the number at Five, we have to actually plug it in because that only works when we have these types of proportional relationships. So for 10 DVDs plus the $15 flat fee, we got 80 plus 15 is 95. Do the same thing at 20. So now we've got $8 per DVD per tw for 20 of them plus the flat fee. Uh, so it looks like that's 175. And then this guy, the main difference between their equation is yes, it has a smaller, lower rate of change and then it does have a constant at the end. So the tables for these two, it's very, very important that you know what's going on at the x is zero uh, row because that tells us is it proportional or is it non-proportional. If, if it is proportional, we can go ahead and apply that logic. Uh, over here, we really can't. We have to substitute it in uh, here. 
Okay? So the last thing, I remember our four forms. We have the story problem, the equations, the tables. And then lastly, the most time-consuming of all is the graph. And I want you to graph both of these um, movie companies on the same set of axes. And I want you, in fact, to do something now that you might not have done before and pause it. And when you get all your materials, you have your straight edge, you have your graph paper, you're ready to go, get you a stopwatch hit the stopwatch and see how long it's taking you to do this because then you'll start to realize that if you're in a time situation you wait on the graph you do the other stuff and then you go back and you do a, a graph as quickly and as efficiently as you can but it does take some time okay so when you are graphing the stuff you need to think about how high up your x values are going and then how high up your y values are going and then choose a, a scale that really maximizes this so in our case we're going up to 20 DVDs for this company, our price has to go to 240. For this company, um, our price goes to 175, and starting at the origin. So go ahead and pause it, and then we'll compare graphs. Okay, so your graph, your high quality graph, should look something like this. Um, if we have a word problem, you are labeling x and y, but you are also labeling your independent variable and your dependent variable. So in this case, the number of DVDs bought goes on the x-axis. Um, and then the monthly cost in dollars, don't forget your unit is on the y. Um, you have a title, so some sort of appropriate title. And because we're using the same axes, you have a key, perhaps. You've used different colors um, or different symbols, but you've uh, emphasized which is which. So both of these graphs, um, and mine I actually went up to 25, but it's okay. So one of them, I Heart Movies, starts at the origin, and Movies Are We is a price slightly higher than that, and you can see how these two progress. So it's easy to see from a graph which is proportional, because if it's not going through the origin, Origin, we know it's not proportional. If it is passing through the point 0 comma 0, then it is proportional. So of these two, we know that I Heart Movies is proportional. Okay? So you don't have to label every single one of these things. You could have labeled every other one and just kept it consistent. So for instance, I could have said this one was 20, labeled 60, labeled 100, and every other one would make it a little less cluttered. But no matter how you do it, you need to make sure that you have your data maximized on this graph. Okay? Uh, so now, if we go back to our tables, the trends that you should be noticing um, is that for the iHeart movies, that first column, you can find the price just by multiplying um, the cost per DVD by how many DVDs you buy. And you can also use that trick of, you know, if we have the number or the price for 10 DVDs, I can simply double that price and get the price for 20 DVDs. But we, we it doesn't work for Movies R Us. So here, you know, at 10 it was 120. And then at 20, which was double 10, it was 240. That falls apart over on this guy. So this trick only works when it's proportional because that flat rate sort of complicates things. So you have to plug it into the equation every single time. Right? So non proportional means it does not start at 0, comma, 0. Um, it will be 0, comma, something other than 0. There's a new term that we're going to say today, and the new term is going to be k. So like m was slope, k is a special type of slope. That's all it is. It's a special type of slope, and it's referred to in math as the constant of proportionality. So it is slope, but instead of slope being the change in y over the change in x, these are special because if I take any value for y and I divide it by the the corresponding value for x, I will get the same amount every single time every single row. So going back to this table, if you looked at it, 240 divided by 20, well that's 24 over 2, that's 12. Okay? 120 divided by 10, well that's 12 over 1, that's 12. So this right here is actually what we have now learned is the constant of proportionality. It's k. It's what I can multiply the x by to get my uh, y value with any other mathematics involved. Okay, so proportional, another term in math that we use is called direct variation. Uh, so when we have an equation, you know, typically we do y equals mx plus b in slope intercept form. This will still be true, except if there isn't a constant on it, if there's no like plus 5 or minus 2, um, we don't say plus 0. We just now are going to refer to this as a special type of line that is proportional. So slope, I mean k is m, but not all m's are k. 
So the K is that constant of proportionality or the constant of variation. And it's just true if any Y value can be divided by the X and I get that same thing every single time between all of my points. Okay? So during your classwork uh, next class, you'll be asked to identify what is proportional and what isn't. And the thing that's going to help y'all is this little sheet that we gave you. Make sure you read through this and you notice the trends. So if you're looking at it from a table, if there is a constant rate of change and a constant of proportionality, then the thing will be proportional. Okay? So if you're looking at this one, if it focuses, Aha. Jaden's necklaces, um, if you look at the relationship between x and y, it looks like I can just um, divide the number of x's into the y's and get 1.2 every single time. So if that is true, if my equation doesn't have anything added or subtracting, we can call this proportional. So the constant of proportionality in this case was 1.2. If, for instance, here though, if we go back to the number of classes for this scenario, we'll see that there's not a zero cost. If there's something besides zero when x is zero for the y value, we know it's not proportional. And it proved it here um, again. So if you're trying to determine a k value, make sure that the k value is truly a constant and it works for every single line. So this one has 40, 25, 20, so this is not proportional. From a graph, that one's easy because we know proportional ones will go through the origin 0, 0. Anything that doesn't is non-proportional. Okay? So very quickly, we're going to call this do now number one. And I'm just going to show you two graphs. And you identify which is proportional and which isn't. Give me the slope and give me the y-intercept. Okay? So do now number one is what we'll call this. And we'll call this one problem one. So do now number one A. So this guy versus this guy, and we'll call this one B, um, he has an intercept up at 5, so we'll say B is 5. This one does have an intercept. 0 is a number, so B is 0. He won't have a constant in his equation, but he definitely has a place where his graph intersects the y-axis. Okay? So the B is 0. The slope for this one you can do it in a couple of different ways. So some of y'all like to use a table. So we know that there is a point at 0, 5. And we look for the next lattice point. We can use any of them. But it actually looks like there's one at 1, 6. So 1, 6. The change in y is plus 1. The change in x is plus 1. Therefore, my slope is 1. Does it have a constant of proportionality? Well, if it has an intercept of something other than 0, then no. So there is no constant of proportionality, but we found the two things that we needed to. Um, on B, if you look at this thing, we already said that the intercept was 0. And let's do the slope. So this is scaling a little bit differently. We can say, OK, I have a point at 0, 0. And then it looks like I have a next lattice point at 1, 75. So 1, 75. So the change in y is plus 75. The change in x is plus 1. Therefore, the rise over the run, the slope of this line is 75 over 1, which is really 75. Can we say that 75 is a constant of proportionality? Well, yes, yes you can. So we're going to say that the k value is 75. The first one doesn't have a k value because it's not proportional. And if we continued with this guy's table, um, the next lattice point looks like maybe here at 2, 150. 2, 150. And if k is just something that I multiply any x value by and get y, well, it works. So for here, I can multiply 2 by 75 and get 150. I can multiply 1 by 75 and get 75. Okay. Um, now, for do now number 2, I'm going to show you two tables, and I'm going to ask the exact same information from you. Okay. So with the first one, if I look at what's happening here, um, one way to test if it's proportional is if I have you know, an x value of 10 and an x value of 30, um, are these you know, multiples of each other? If so, it's probably proportional. So with these guys, you find your slope by looking for the change in y over the change in x. So this one has a slope of 20 over 10, which simplifies down to 2. Now, the 
the y-intercept, you can either work your way back to x or you can solve algebraically for it. But if you think about this, if my equation is y equals 2x and I plug in any of these values in for x, let's test this one, 2 times 30 is already 60. So there's nothing, there's nothing that we need to add this for, to this equation to make it work. So this is our equation and the lack of the constant just means that the intercept is zero. So we are dealing with a proportional relationship here and because the slope is two and it has no constant we can therefore say that it has a constant of variation of two. And how we got that is if we looked here we have an, a y value of 60 an x value of 30 which is two. If you tested another one its y value is 80 and its corresponding x value is 40, which is also 2. So if you divide any y by any x in this table, you'll get that k value of 2. So we are going to say, yes, it is proportional, and the constant of proportionality is 2. Um, with this guy, my trick doesn't work. So I have 10, I have 20, and these guys don't really double each other. These, this one isn't triple what it was up here, so I know something's fishy about this. So let's go ahead and calculate our slope. So from here to here is an increase of 200. From here to here is an increase of 10. So therefore my slope is 200 over 10. Knock those off, we have 20. So we have an equation now that is y equals 20x. And then I think what is at, uh, what is y when x is zero? Or you just kind of plug this in. 20, or 10 times 20 is 200. How do I make 200 450? I have to add 250. And let's just verify over here. Um, what is, you know, if I plugged in 30 here, and I'm supposed to get out 850 here, let's just verify that that is in fact my uh, intercept. So two, 20 times 30 is 2 times 3 with two zeros at the end, plus some value is 850. If I SPO that 600, it looks like we're in pretty good shape because we are saying that the B value is 250. So if we have a B value other than zero, we know this is not proportional. So my slope is 20, my intercept is 250, but I do not have a K value because there is no constant of variation. If I divide 850 by 30, it produces something different than if I divide 650 by uh, 20.